When something takes the badge as the most expensive, it must mean that it has some properties that are difficult to come by and is absolutely priceless. Well, we have this one substance that takes the badge, and it's the most expensive in the entire universe. Keep watching until the end of the video to learn why this substance is so expensive that no one can afford it. Antimatter is the most priced substance available only to Earth. According to NASA, just one gram of it costs about $100 trillion. And when compared with the annual budget of the United States, it's five times higher. Now the question here is, why is it so expensive and what makes it useful? This substance is the best explosive in the world and nothing can be compared to its explosive abilities. Antimatter is one of the many, if not the most, mysterious substances in our world today. Here's a simple breakdown of the word. The prefix anti connotates that this is the complete opposite of our familiar word or matter. This opposing quality is so great that if it comes in contact with matter, there will be a tremendous explosion known as annihilation. In short, everything will be totally destroyed, a total disappearance of matter and antimatter. Matter and antimatter will vanish, turning into lighter energy. The matter will disintegrate totally into particles that are much smaller than atoms. The kind of energy contained in antimatter is ridiculously great. Here's an example. In 2021, the US thermal power plants burned 419 million tons of coal to generate 844 terawatt hours of electricity. If the same power plant was run with antimatter alone, it would only use about 17 kilograms of antimatter to produce the same amount of electricity. Imagine the difference. It's like comparing a grain of sand with a mountain, meaning that what would take truckloads of coal and heavy labor to achieve will only require a traveling bag of antimatter to achieve. The beautiful thing about the energy from antimatter is that it causes no form of pollution and no massive carbon dioxide emission. This powerful substance was discovered by accident, and before that, the whole of human existence was unaware that there was something like it. Antimatter was discovered by a theoretical physicist back in the 1930s. His name was Paul Adrian Maurice Dirac. He was solving the equation of electron motion at speeds similar to the speed of light. He got to a point where he had to solve a quadratic equation describing the value of the energy from the electron. But as we all know, a quadratic equation has two solutions or two roots. With one solution, everything is clear. But what did the second negative root mean? Since energy can't be negative, every scientist who learned about this result dismissed it. They acted like they were taught in school and concluded that the second solution had no physical meaning since it was negative. However, Paul Dirac insisted this second solution should have a meaning. There must be an article just like an electron but with a positive charge, an anti-electron. Dirac also predicted the destruction of the pair that is negative electron plus positive positron with the release of a great amount of energy. Dirac's story was greatly opposed as it's the case for a very revolutionary discovery. He was called a stubborn man. Heisenberg, a close friend of Dirac, even had something to say about his friend's theory. The saddest part of modern physics is and remains Dirac's theory. I consider it simply rubbish that no one can take seriously. But just like the light at the end of every tunnel, the truth came out. In 1932, a man named K. Anderson discovered the infamous anti-electron. He called it the positron, which means positive electron. Dirac was right all along. This means that if there's a positron, there must be a particle named the proton but with a negative charge. This will be the antiproton. This also means that there must be an antineutron. The combination of antiproton and antineutron will launch positions around them. This will result in antiatoms and numerous antiatoms will create antimatter, the opposite of matter. This ultimately means that there is annihilation, a massive source of energy. After this discovery, many scientists still refuse to believe that there is antimatter, just as they did with Dirac's positron theory. If there is a positron, is it a distinctive particle? Believing that antimatter exists and proving it will mean that there are other antis, anti-planets, anti-stars, and even anti-galaxies. And because our planets, stars, and galaxies, which consist of matter, are constantly moving through space and time, we would have somehow come in contact with antimatter, causing a great explosion that will ultimately lead to annihilation. Everywhere will be filled with light and energy. To give a figure, the annihilation of one gram of antimatter will produce 100 trillion joules of energy. An equivalent is detonating a 10 kiloton atomic bomb. Imagine the carnage. To give a clearer picture, Hiroshima was destroyed by a 15 kiloton atomic bomb, and only one gram of antimatter can make more than half of that. Seeing that the laws of our world are symmetrical, ultimately every opposite should have the same symmetry. As a result, when the Big Bang occurred, there would have been the creation of the same proportion of antimatter as there is matter, which would have instantly resulted in annihilation. 
we would have ceased to exist before we even knew what existence meant. Instead of having the universe as we know it, it would have been a boundless ocean of light with us as elementary particles. This is logical. Although an experimental discovery of antiprotons occurred in 1955, this logical conclusion brought the whole research to a rather non-trivial conclusion. In the following year, the antineutron was discovered in the same accelerator. By then, it was easy to believe that antimatter truly existed, and by 1965, the first anti-atom was discovered. Unfortunately, they were hydrogen atoms, so they didn't cause any curious mind to dig further into research. The scientist who refused to believe in the existence of antimatter knew that the existence of antimatter would shatter the foundations on which our fundamental ideas about the world were built. Now that we know what antimatter is, we could already begin to guess why it's so expensive. Well, we have some theories. The first reason is the complexity of producing antimatter. You're wondering, antimatter can be produced? Yes. To extract antimatter, it's no doubt that energy-intensive technologies are needed. If you were to create just one gram of antimatter, you would need to use all the electricity generated on the planet for a whole year. That's about 25 million billion kilowatt hours of energy. And all that is for just one gram. Now that's a lot of work we can't afford, meaning that highly efficient technologies need to be used. Given the cost of getting antimatter, only one-tenth of a billion of invested energy can be returned. If they were to collect all the antimatter we've ever produced and destroy it, the energy generated would not even be enough to brew a cup of hot coffee. That means it wouldn't even be up to a gram. With the huge cost of production comes the considerable cost of storing it. Indeed, whatever would cast an arm and leg to produce will cost much more to store. In this case, storage is much more important than production. We wouldn't want antimatter flying around since our world is made up of ordinary matter. And we are all aware of what happens when matter meets antimatter. Storing antimatter would involve more energy-intensive and precise technologies. Antimatter may seem like something that we wouldn't get to witness in many light years to come. But the truth is, antimatter is closer than you think. There are sources of antimatter that are close to us. An example is bananas. Bananas emit one positron every 75 minutes. How? Well, bananas contain a small amount of K40 potassium, one of the isotopes of potassium. The decay of K40 can sometimes produce positrons. However, if it would take 25 million billion kilowatt hours of electric energy to create one gram of antimatter, how many bananas would we need, and for how many years? Additionally, small amounts of antimatter are raining down on Earth in the form of cosmic rays. These cosmic rays consist of elementary particles. These elementary particles reach our atmosphere in amounts ranging up over 100 square meters. Since science is finding new ways to improve the technology we have now, it's safe to say that we will someday be able to produce antimatter, and that would be an incredible feat for us all. But hopefully, we won't annihilate ourselves in the process.